feel like I'm nodding my head along to a funeral song. Funeral's lit, fam. <laughs> Hello, peeps. My name is Comedian, but let's just keep that between us, yeah. Um, so today, after a weird hiatus, which I blame on me and also the US election, because I did spend most of one week lying on a couch just refreshing the news app, which was fun. Um, I'm back reacting to the RMs. The RM. I mean, I guess he is the RM. He is the rat monster, but I didn't mean to say that. No, I'm... Uh, let's just restart that. Reacting to RM's monoplay, this, which so far has been a journey through my psyche, which I didn't know I was going to take, you know? A bit like how you don't have any idea what to expect when you get on your first roller coaster, or you do your first loop loop, and you're like, huh, that was brand new, and now I'm going to throw up. Well, with this thing, I was like, huh, that was brand new, and now I'm going to go to my bedroom and lie on the floor for a while. So it's... It's, uh, it's, it's intense. It's, um, it's impressive. I, I mean, I've, I know BTS and I have known BTS as a band that is doing like lyrics that you wouldn't normally find in, you know, pop music, but RM's mono mixtape really takes that to another level. Uh, and I've just been loving it so far. And I think I've only got two songs left, which is part sad and part maybe a blessing to my brain, to deserve a little rest. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to see how this thing wraps up. And also I'm excited to finish reacting to it because I'm definitely gonna download it, put it on my iTunes and listen to it in my own time, firmly wrapped up in a blanket. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that too. This is definitely one of those things that I want to listen to in my free time. And if you're just tuning in, you haven't seen my other reactions, uh, you can, I need to make a playlist. I need to, I said this last time. I'll make a playlist soon, but um, they're on my channel, obviously. Uh, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch the next one as well. Uh, I have a Patreon uh, where you can watch Run BTS stuff. Discord, uh, uh, notification bell, give me online approval, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, let's do this. I really hope I picked a decent translation this time. Naga. Yep. Interesting. Now I'm wondering where this song is going immediately because we have what I would call quite a funeralistic, which I don't think is a word, but it should be. Uh, if you're listening, Oxford Dictionary, call me. But a quite a funeralistic uh, intro, quite, you know, like the sort of like the, the sort of like dreamy, like church synths, like sort of electric church horns and the title, everything goes and the lyrics, everything passes, it all passes, which I guess is also everything goes. <laughs> So I wonder where this is going. I like these, I like these, uh, these singular kind of outbursts, like these assertions for sure. Certainly, it's interesting. Okay, this beat is really cool. It's straddling such a fine line between like a positive emotion and a negative emotion. Not necessarily negative, but more sort of like up upbeat and melancholy. It's really straddling a fine line between those two. It's interesting. Like just when you think it's about to be like really happy, it sort of shifts a little bit and changes direction. And now I love the evolution of the song, the progression, because like I said, it started out sounding Funeralistic, and again, that's copyright, Oxford Dictionary. But uh, it started out sounding funeralistic, and now it sounds kind of like an 80s song. Like, really, it kind of sounds like a fun, like, 80s kind of bop, you know? Got that kind of synthy feel and the big boomy hits. I feel like I'm nodding my head along to a funeral song. Like, this funeral's lit, fam! So the song does seem to be quite positive. It's funny because like with the Everything Goes label, I was wondering if it was more gonna be like a link between, and I guess it still could be, but like a link between, you know, the idea that nothing is finite, but also in the sense that life isn't finite. And maybe for some people that might be kind of depressing, but for some people that's kind of reassuring. And I guess that is a larger theme, but right now I'm kind of just getting the theme of like, you know, everything passes. Like maybe it's the rain that's giving me this idea, but you know, even, even bad days pass, bad times pass, you know? It gets better, as they say. That's the vibe I'm getting from this, and I like it. Oh, 
I love the 80s synthy vibe to it. The floaty like sort of piano chords in the background. All right, now this really is starting to flower more. I wasn't sure if we were gonna have like, not proper lyrics, that sounds silly, but you know, the intro was like I said, very kind of like short, like kind of like punctual, punctuated, like hard assertions, but now we do actually have some more traditional style of delivery from, from RM himself. Let's see where this is going. <laughs> I like that. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone. I mean, you know, I'm not the measuring stick for stuff that's happened because I don't go outside. But I've I've not personally heard anyone say to make that tr link between. I've obviously heard about you know the flowers wilting, you know, but not not heard it, and the fruit grows ripe. I like that because even though they're kind of two ends of the same carrot stick, I have bunnies, so I don't, anyway like. In the sense that obviously a flower wilting is is degradation, it is you know something breaking down, and technically a fruit growing ripe is a flower wilting is almost unanimously a negative thing. Like it's kind of like very synonymous with sad thing. It's a very it's an imagery of of death and despair and decay and stuff. Whereas a fruit growing ripe, obviously you know to a certain extent, uh, is is a good thing. You know, I've right now I've got a couple of avocados in a bowl that just aren't ripe yet. And I'm looking at those suckers like, you boy, you better get squishy for me. I have a strange relationship with avocados. But um, yeah, so obviously, although obviously fruit can get too ripe, I mean, there is a positive side to that. So I don't know, that's, that's just why that, that sentence stood out to me. It's very interesting. This is powerful. This is really powerful. <laughs> and I respect this message a lot. I mean, it's a very, it's a, it's a tricky thing to, to nail down and to advocate because like telling people embrace the pain, it kind of doesn't sound, it sounds antithetical. Like it sounds I, it, like, it, it, you know, it, like obviously that's not always accurate. And if somebody is like, for example, you know, like that movie, what was it like 27 hours or whatever about the guy who like got his leg or arm stuck in a roller. Obviously you shouldn't be going to him just being like, mate, Embrace the pain. This is good for you. Like, no, that that was a bad, a bad thing. But you know, there are a lot of situations in life where, like, no one really gets to feel happy all the time. I talked to them in the past that I know people that are happy most of the time, and I deeply resent them, and I'm also very happy for them. But not no one, I don't think, is happy all the time. A lot of people, you know, their ratio of good to bad is a lot more. It's like a sine wave, you know. It's much more up and down. But it's that old chestnut of you can't have the good without the bad, you know? It's almost like if you the, the quicker you embrace the bad, then the maybe the more quickly the good will come around, you know? Or at least it's like, at the very least, you kind of like, if you can learn to live with it, knowing that some good times are coming around, then, you know, your life will be more tolerable, I guess. I don't know if that's quite what he was saying. Or if he did say that, he said it more poetically. Pricking out, it fills up your lungs. That's giving me memories of living in England right there. <laughs> this is so... I, I, I might become a slightly better adult. That's the most RM thing he's ever said. So I guess there is some of the females talking about earlier as far as like the relation to death, which he's kind of hinted at. And it's not, I don't think it's like, a, it's obviously not a suicidal message, but it's like, you know, everything passes, even in the sense of like, you know, you like you like some, somebody said like, oh, I'll be miserable forever. It's like, well, even that isn't true because no one lives forever. Like everything is finite. And I think it's very important to remember that. Because I really think it's true that as humans, it's, it's our it's the fact that we have a complete disconnection from our mortality quite often. That means that we often get caught up in things that maybe don't, don't matter as much, you know. I feel like that's the whole reason why Breaking Bad was so successful as a TV show is because it really depicted the idea of somebody completely cracking the code of learning to break through the matrix of being, you know, of thinking you'll live forever or being afraid of doing stuff when actually, you know, realizing I won't live forever, I shouldn't be afraid of doing anything because nothing is permanent. And then obviously he went off and started making meth and became a drug kingpin and killed lots of people. But it doesn't have to go that way. Some people do skydiving and rock climbing and stuff, you know? There's lots of ways to, to blow off steam. You know, skydiving, making meth, it's... 
there's different, there's a whole spectrum between those two. But I really like what RM's getting at here. And I haven't got all of it. There's a line here that was. I think that's the line. If you want to become dull, you need to go out into the wind. I wonder if that means dull as in like numb to the pain or like used to it. But it's, an, it's, it's a very beautiful metaphor because obviously when you go out into the wind, as like, again, this is really reminding me of English weather, but when you go out into a cold wind for long enough, eventually you become numb to it. You just like, your fingers get cold and you just, you become like a little penguin. You're like, ah, but it does help you become numb to it. Instead of like, it's like, cheer up. I like that. They should really play this song in like waiting rooms at therapist offices you know that would be much better but the old therapist office i went to they had like whale music which was like that was a decent second i'd say but this would be a number one choice for sure it's on loop it's a very reassuring song I respect this a lot because I haven't felt, I know it might not seem like it because you know of who I am and like my emotions are in limited supply, but I actually genuinely haven't felt this emotional or listened to music in a long time. Maybe, I don't know if that's like a certain kind of emotion, but whatever it is, I haven't felt it in a while. So yeah. I'm impressed. This is, it's good. I think it's just a, there's a perfect, this might not even be lyrically my favorite song on the mixtape, but I just think the interplay between, ooh, interplay, what a word, the interplay between the words and the singing style and the, and the, and the, the beat, I really, I really like that beat. It's perfect. It was also that was what it all passes, yeah. On, rain on the outro, now I understand the background picture thing. Okay, I think that translation was good. I don't know. I don't know if you guys agree, but like, I think I got lots out of that. Cool. That was great. That was a really great song. That might be my number two favorite one on the album. I don't know. I think if I if I had to pick a song to listen to, I'd probably pick that one. So maybe it's my favorite one. I still feel like I like the, the lyrics of Moonchild more, but as a song, as a complete package, I really like that song a lot. Uh, maybe even the word love comes in there. I don't know. That's all. Love, what a scary concept. My rabbit's terrified of it, that's for sure. Isn't that right, Maisie? You don't like my love, do you? She, she secretly loves my love. Anyway, um, it's true, it's weird to talk to my rabbits because you don't have any proof that they exist, so it could just be talking to a wall. Actually, one second. Maisie, what are you doing? You've been caught red-handed. Look at this. She has, she has some of Polly's hair in her mouth. She has some of the other bunny's hair in her mouth. You love my love, don't you? Anyway, see, I, they do it. My bunnies do exist, sweetie. Um, they, they're so distracted. I don't want anything done when they're looking so cute. What was I doing? Right, a video. The song, everything goes. Yeah, honestly, that was that was fantastic. I don't think it really matters, you know, something, some random distinction. Like, that's my favorite song on the mixtape. I just really, really greatly enjoyed that song. I hope you enjoyed it too. I hope you enjoyed my reaction. Um, I'm looking forward to the last song on the album. It feels strange that it's coming down to that, but it's all so good as well. Like this song, and I, I really like the progression of this album. I really do feel like it has been quite a concise journey. And sometimes with some albums, I'll feel like the kind of like the, the track order is really like kind of just, you know, nothing -y, kind of arbitrary, but this does feel like a progression and a deliberate, you know, the rain sounds in there and the theme of it really felt like almost like a brain cleanse after like RM unleashing, like here is all this like really sad, deep stuff. And it's kind of at the end, it's like, but you know, it's fine. Nothing lasts forever. Like, I don't know. Now I'm guessing the last song is going to be even more upbeat, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my reaction. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, click the, <coughs> is that bunny hair in my throat? Click the bell button thingy. That matters for some reason. Don't forget about my Patreon, Discord, social media as well. I'm on Twitter and, and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, uh, that was great. I'll see you guys here next time for the next one. Bye. All right. And remember, if you like my reaction to Everything Goes, then click the subscribe button for more of my shows. They're not really shows, but yeah.
Maisie. You're so cute.